I'm Urban Eve and in this video I'm just going to discuss my reaction to Love is Blind on Netflix. I'm only about six episodes in so I have not watched the entire thing yet. I haven't watched the reunion. That being said, um, if you're watching this and you haven't already watched six episodes or more, I would just warn you that there might be spoilers. Uh, in this video, I really just want to talk about my immediate reaction to um, the couples that finally make it to the Mexico vacation. So for instance, even though Carlton and Diamond didn't make it to move in together, I still will be talking about them in addition to the other couples on Love is Blind. So I'm just going to start with my favorite couple, Lauren and Cameron. Um, why they're my favorite couple, when they met in the pods, and it seemed like an unlikely pairing, not because of the fact that she is black and he is white. I mean, that's the most like obvious one, but love is blind, right? So they don't know what each other's race is. But um, that aside, they just seemed like not the most likely couple when us as viewers, or at least me, because I'm just speaking from my perspective, like looked at them like, Cameron seemed so stiff and serious and Lauren was just like, you know, a woman I know, you know, she's just really, she's chill, she's, she knows what she wants, you know, she's not um, wishy-washy, but she just seems so regular and normal and gorgeous and Cameron, who, you know, he's not unattractive. In the pause, he just seemed a little bit like just stiff and, you know, maybe a little dark. Um, but as the time went on, what I really, really love about them is the way that they acknowledged the things that they uh, valued and had in common. And these were things that had to do with, you know, just impulsive attraction. They were really like core um, values that they connected on. Everyone on this show is supposedly looking for the person that they're going to marry and be with for the rest of their lives. Like that is the goal. And they just seem so well matched to each other. And it just seems like they really found what they wanted in each other. It's almost a little too good to be true, but I, I mean, I'm at the part now where like they go to each other's homes and meet the families and see each other's separate apartments. And when Cameron brought Lauren to his house, it was like a wife trap. Like he, he just, it's like he had been dreaming about this and really like feathering a nest and preparing for a wife and he found what he wanted and he's just like come on in like this is yours as well it's i think he's a really i don't know like he's a very special person and lauren is a like she's a really cool person as well but i can imagine her as a person like i've I've known women like her. Um, I, I, she's not an improbable person. But Cameron, in the realm of how men are judged by women on a whole, is like some weird, like, unicorn man. So the next couple is Damien and Giannina. Um, so here's what I remember. In the pods, Damien and Giannina you know, they had a connection. They have a genuine connection. Uh, it's very clear from the beginning that Giannina is a very spirited, very passionate young woman. And she's not willing to compromise that. Like she's just boldly who she is. She has like high highs and low lows and that's who she is. And Damien is a uh, um, yeah, Damien, he's, um, and he is a, a, a white guy with reddish hair. 
and he's in love with Giannina. That's that's the that's what I get of them. Um, as their relationship progresses from that part of the experiment to you know he proposes or actually I'm sorry like Giannina is just like no I'm I'm equal to you I'm gonna propose to you woohoo right so after all of that stuff they um you know they're on the Mex they're at the Mexico vacation and Giannina very boldly is just like let's let's get to it like I want to see what this dick does like let's go and he's just like seemed to be really taken aback by that and I'm just like, what's the problem, really? At some point, all of the couples meet together somewhere on the beach that Nick Lachey and his wife have, you know, arranged for them to meet at so they can see all of the people that they did not propose to and, you know, just further this experiment in which it becomes obvious that the whole production is just throwing them in situations to see, like, who's gonna fuck up first. Um, and that's when Damien is talking with the guys and he brings up the whole like moment when Giannina tells him like, I'm your dessert, like let's get to it. And he was just like, what do you guys think about that? Like, uh, I'm just like, do you not remember who this person, I mean, it's clear to me who she is. So I was just like, I, and plus which again, there's this, there's, there's an overarching sort of like generalization uh, that men give off that this is ki the kind of uh, behavior or the kind of approach from a woman that really turns them on. She's just like, I'm ready, <laughs> let's do it. And I was just like, yes, Giannina. I just wonder with Damien and Giannina what was the thing that Damien felt drew him to her? And how is he not seeing how it connects to this whole person uh, who at her core, the thing that like motivates her is this fire and passion and curiosity and being in the moment. Kelly and Kenny. Here are my impressions that I remember about Kelly and Kenny. Kenny just seems like the nicest well-to-do guy. He's 27 years old, looks like 30 something. Um, and Kelly is just, just very stable, down to earth, cute, fun loving, knows what she wants, sweet, supportive woman. And the moment of their true connection was over this book that they both discovered that they love that is a childhood book. I don't even remember what the name of the book is, but I know in that moment there was like a special coming together between the two of them because childhood books are very formative. And just to see that happen between them was so beautiful, like really touching. And when they met, they seemed like boop boop, like two, two peas in a pod. Um, so in that sense, them both being like so well matched together and so white together, <laughs> it just seems a little boring now. Something else that I remember about them is that Kelly decides that she wants to wait when they go on the Mexico trip before they have sex. Like she wants to um, not jump into bed right away. And to this date, I don't even know if they have at episode six, I don't even know if they have had sex. I think they're waiting till they get married, which I totally respect in this context because obviously ain't nobody a virgin in this group. Actually, there is a guy who is a virgin. There was a guy who mentioned he was a virgin in the very first couple of episodes when it's just like you see the entire group of people, which is way more people than we end up seeing, obviously, because they only focus on these like five or six couples. Um, and he said that he was a virgin and, you know, the guys had their response to it. But I don't think anybody in the selected group is a virgin. Therefore, I was just I totally respect that. I think it's it's, um, you know, honest. And I, I, more than that, it's working because they are so physically affectionate to each other. They're so like loving and cuddling and just 
it's I mean they they just seem like they belong together um and it's sweet they're kind of like our quote-unquote normal-ish couple K and K they're just a cute normal couple Amber and Barnett I feel like I can't talk about Amber and Barnett without talking about Jessica and Mark I think I'm gonna start with Jessica and Mark because Jessica I just feel like a lot sort of like in the pods hinged around her and Barnett because her and Barnett and Mark and Amber they kind of you know have a lot to do with each other Mark only likes Jessica but Jessica liked Barnett and Mark and Amber only liked Barnett. It's like a weird like love hamster wheel where nobody gets to be happy because everybody really, really likes somebody else. At least that's how it plays out in the beginning. I guess I am talking about these two couples in conjunction with each other. It's hard not to. Barnett annoyed the crap out of me initially. I thought he was cute. I mean, he's handsome. He's like a white frat guy. He's just, he's he's all about laughs and um, he he just likes, you know, he likes Amber and he likes Jessica, but he's scared of Amber and, you know, he's, he's drawn to Jessica. Um, and I just found that really annoying in the beginning. But I think that he took on the advice and the guidance that he found uh, among the men in, in their compound. There's this one guy who seriously seems like a plant. I know that they make it seem like he's one of the contestants or the, the people who are volunteering for the experiment on the men's side but he literally is like a guru he's like uh sitting with Barnett in more than one instance and he's just like just breathe man just take a deep breath and just go out there and you just you know show the strength it takes to be vulnerable man and you just take deep breaths and I'm just like that guy is great like why don't they have somebody like that on the woman's side? <laughs> but I guess they don't need that because women are just naturally counselors and empaths and just in touch with the ability to listen while somebody is talking about the guy of your dreams and having a special connection with him. Amber is all about Barnett. Jessica is all about Barnett. Although she does acknowledge an instant connection with Mark. They do have a something special. Mark is all about Jessica. Mark is incredibly passionate. He knows what he wants. He is a physical trainer. Or he's in physical training. He's definitely built. I hate how people keep, keep remarking on his stature. I mean, like, I guess he's not like super tall like Barnett, but like, Barnett is a giant. Um, I think like Mark is like an average height. I think he's adorable. I really love how passionate and focused he is. And I have a lot of respect for him until a situation that plays out later in the pods wherein Jessica, basically Barnett comes to realize that he has to be honest with Jessica about not feeling like he can commit to her. And I think it was his instinct, and I'm, I think he went with it, that Jessica is was not the person that he was going to be serious about. And, but all the time he's letting these, he's letting on with both women, Jessica and Amber, that there's something special there, that he could see himself marrying them. And so in one session, Jessica is just like, do you still feel that way about me? And she's just like all waiting for all the, the shower of like adoration. And Barnett's just like, actually, no, I don't really, I'm not sure. And I did think that, you know, I was upset that Barnett, like, it seemed like he let her on and that she was hurt. Like, I did think he was a fuck boy, 
because he had essentially was just like fuzzy about both of them and giving them both the mixed messages. So I did believe that about Barnett, but surprisingly enough, he ends up choosing Amber, rejecting Jessica. No, she's the one that said that he was a fuckboy to Amber. And Amber's just like, okay, whatever. Jessica then goes back to Mark, who she had earlier rejected. And Mark's just like, what the fuck? Because he already started planning like everything. He was taking notes. And um, when she goes running back to Mark, when Jessica goes back to him and it's just like, well, you know, do you still feel this way about me or whatever? Or I'm ready to commit or whatever bullshit. When Mark takes her back, that's the beginning of me just kind of being like, questioning Mark's sense of self and sense of like self-respect um but at that point I was just like he's he's strong-headed like he feels like he can really make this work he probably feels like you know well okay it's okay you made a mistake I know how you really feel about me like okay Jessica's freaked out one of her main freak outs she says is the age difference between her and Mark he's 24 she's 34. My husband is five years younger than me and I didn't find that out until after I was like oh we we this is we this is so good like until we had just had our special moments together and I was just like oh my god oh my god what are you telling me but five years is not as big as 10 years still though she makes a huge deal out of it all through the damn thing. It's just like, what happens when we have kids and I'm 50 and you're four? It's just like, she she literally sabotages to the point of like insult with Mark. And it's horrible to watch him just kind of like absorb that and take it in every single time. And I'm just like, Mark, she doesn't love you, dude. Plus which, she's drunk all the time. From the moment that they all see each other again, Jessica has a glass of wine in her hand and she's drunk every fucking time. When she goes to meet his family, I was so scared that she was gonna get drunk in front of them because <laughs> like you, you meeting your, you meeting the family for the first time, you need to act right. <laughs> And I was just so scared that she was going to get drunk, so scared, and just embarrass Mark. Not that apparently that's the easiest thing to do, because she basically rejects him, insults him, and he just processes it, absorbs it, and comes back. Maybe that is part of something that has to do with the sustainability and longevity of marriage, but we don't usually see it play out like this, and it's just... I don't like Jessica. I can't stand her. Like she is just the worst kind of human being. And at the at, on the other end, Barnett, who I really was just like, oh, he's definitely a fuck boy. He is really like, he's really growing as a person. Like I'm watching him just, you know, other facets of him are emerging. And even after he learns about how Amber is not really a person who lives to work, who struggles with <clears throat> financial stability. He's still in there and he is just, it's really sweet to see him be a caretaker and be um, nurturing and see how like honest he is with Amber's mother when he first meets her about how Amber makes him feel and why he knew it was Amber who he wanted. And I'm a believer now. I'm just like, okay, I believe this. Amber, on the other hand, <clears throat> Amber, I think I would just describe as, I, I, I wasn't really sure how to feel about her. Um, what seemed like an overly confident attitude that Barnett is the one and he could have only have been with her and nobody else is going to threaten that. 
because she says it all the time to the camera. And that's what makes me feel a little worried for her. I want things to work out between them, but I just don't want her to delude herself. So for the last couple, the couple that didn't make it past the honeymoon phase, Diamond and Carlton. Diamond and Carlton are the one black couple that made it to the honeymoon phase. Um, Carlton is a young man who um, let us know from the beginning that he had dated both genders in his past, but chose to withhold that information from Diamond until after he proposed to her. Now, I completely understand why he would do what he did. And I sympathize with his choice to do it. I can't even imagine having to deal with the thought of being rejected or judged by someone you might potentially be spending the rest of your life with. Um, however, in that same breath, I couldn't imagine waiting until after I proposed to the person to tell them something like that and potentially be rejected and judged by them. I would want to get it out right in the open, right at the beginning, because what, then it just seems like a trap. It, seem, it, it seems like a trap. That being said, I don't believe he deserves what response of the damaging, violent, hateful response that he's been getting from, you know, faceless hordes on Twitter or online. Like, I think that that is just disgusting and ugly and nobody has the right to tell a person that they should end their lives over something that they disagree with them about. I think that that is just a horrible horrible um result of social media and like this culture of tearing down people not ever having been in their shoes and never never having you're never going to be in their shoes in many cases again however i think the way that carlton dealt with it was so shitty i think that diamond if she was going to reject him at all she would have done it immediately Instead, she said, I need a moment to think about this. I need to process it. He seemed to understand and let her take her time. And then they came back together at the pool. You know, even before he told her he was acting like an asshole, I'm pretty sure that he had something to drink, but he acted like he was mad at her because of something that he held back and now had to tell her, which I already was just like, what, what's happening now? You, you, you cannot think that anybody else is responsible for what you decided not to tell. Diamond expressed how she still had deep feelings for him, how she would always love him. She was honest about how she felt he played the experiment. That's what she said. I feel like you played the experiment. Why didn't you tell me everything right in the open in the beginning? And that was the trigger for Carlton. When she said he played the experiment, he like, lost his shit he's just like oh what oh oh this is how it is oh blah 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 blah. then he starts calling her all kinds of bitch then he talks about how her wig is sliding back it's been sliding from the beginning and i was like devastated it just it was so ugly he just she diamond was fully honest about how she felt she was open, she was vulnerable, and he was scared of being destroyed for being open and vulnerable. So he overcompensated for what he expected to happen by being like a hundred and thousand percent more shitty than she ever was to him. She wasn't shitty to him, she was honest. Honesty can hurt. Sometimes you hear something about yourself from somebody about how they felt that you did something and you may not have intended it, but you have to understand and hear that this is how they received it. And I believe that's all she was doing because I agreed. I was just like, it feels like you played the experiment. There's no nice way to say that. It's not nice. It doesn't feel nice. Him flipping out on her, you know, calling her names, like he just burnt, every inch of every 
or any potential possibility for them to forge anything in their relationship. Just burnt it to the ground within minutes. And I just felt like it was so irresponsible and so fucked up of him. And that's, that's it. I don't think that anyone, anybody else was responsible for his shit but him. Anything that he, that he felt, anything that he feared, he took responsibility for it when he decided not to talk about it. She did not slap him in the face. She did not run away in shock. She did not call him names. She didn't do any of those things. So yeah, his attitude was shitty. His decision, I understood it. His attitude, 100% shitty. So that's basically it for my, um, feelings and reactions to all of these couples on Love is Blind. Um, I basically started watching it because a friend of mine, his wife, who's also a friend of mine, was just like, I'm watching this show. Please watch it so that I can have somebody else to talk to about it. And I was just like, okay, like I added it. I don't watch reality TV shows except for Project Runway and like uh, Master Chef and Master Chef Junior, which are like competitive reality TV shows. I don't watch Housewives. I don't watch any of those things. So I didn't really think that I would be into this. I also have never and will never watch The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. So again, didn't really see myself getting sucked into this show. But I really think it was Cameron and Lauren that like pulled me in. And not just them, but just the whole idea of this experiment of just hearing somebody's voice and talking to someone for a few days and learning about them as a way to form an intimate connection that is not based on what you can see about a person. Um, I think that there is something to that. Uh, the levels that they go to after that, it just becomes a little bit more usual run of the mill reality TV, real world, throw these people in a, in a jar together, shake it up and see what happens. I also feel like there are real relationships, real connections and real intimacies being forged here. And that is what really interests me about the show. It was not lost on me as a black woman that even though they start the show with a bunch of people who do look pretty diverse, they end up selecting a cast of people who look more like a bachelorette or bachelor cast. And I kind of felt a little tricked by that, but I still was just like, I feel redeemed by the fact that there's a complexity to the experiment in this case that kept me watching. You know, because there are certain people like Jessica, when I'm watching her, I'm just like, oh God, this is just like reality TV trash right here. Like, does she go nowhere without a glass of wine? It's just fucking crazy. But then I see couples like Lauren and Cameron, and I'm just like, they're aliens. And I'm not even talking about their race. I'm just talking about how different they are and how the, the the combination of the two of them together is just surprisingly just it just works so well um so it's like unpredictable matching uh it's just it's fascinating to me it really is if i had to rate my favorite couples from my favorite all the way down cameron and lauren would be at the top then kenny and kelly then Janina and Damien <laughs> and then between Amber and Burnett and Jessica and Mark Amber and Burn Amber and Burnett and then Jessica and Mark are at the bottom because they just straight up struggling right now it's just not even it's pretty blatant like she goes off whenever possible when they're in a group together to like you know just cozy up to Barnett and talk about all her problems, of course, with a glass of wine. And it's just, they're at the bottom. They're at the bottom. I am really looking forward to watching the rest of the series, like super, super, super excited to see the reunion. 
and to finally be able to just go on social media and just read all the think pieces and all the shit and like everything because I have not allowed myself to do that with this show until I'm finished watching it because I know there's a bunch of stuff because it got released 18 months after it happened so I have to be patient but until then I have like at least four or five more episodes left so I'm excited to see what happens I'm so excited for like the weddings and the wedding dresses <sighs> oh god let me know if you are watching uh love is blind on Netflix what you think of it who your favorite couples are who you hate the most who you love the most um I would love to hear and if you want me to do another video about my response to the conclusion let me know I will probably do it anyway because I just I just have a really good feeling about how it's gonna play out not that I know specifically what's gonna happen but I know whatever happens it's definitely going to be worth a talk and a dissection so until I see you in my next video if you're not watching love is blind on Netflix you should watch it give it a shot. If you're not into shows like that, I wasn't either. I'm still not. I just really like um, relationships and discussions about how intimacy and connection, real connection is built. And so it's fascinating to me around that. And of course, there are all the other like guilty pleasures included. I would definitely recommend it if you were interested in any of those things. So until my next video about uh, my response to the conclusion of Love is Blind on Netflix, I will see you later. Bye-bye.